Welcome to Wealthy Every 7th, where episodes come out the 7th, 14th, 21st, and 28th of every month. Today, for the first time, I've got a viewer-contributed topic of discussion, courtesy one of my most loyal subscribers, one of my favorite commenters. I'm also starting my day off with this stack order pickup from Chipotle in case you're interested. That's what we're heading to go pick up now. The topic suggested, give me your thoughts on the current economic circumstances and how it will affect gig work or gig workers. And that's a really broad topic. I, I thought about this for the last six days. I was like, there's a, a million and a half different ways I could, uh, I could go at this. The issue with addressing gig workers in the current economic landscape is that so many of our realities differ. We got people who are uh, basically in semi-retirement doing this. We got people that are part-time, whether they're looking for extra beer money or trying to pay down a debt faster. You know, you got people that are committed to this full-time because they don't like the nine to five. They don't want to have a boss. We got people who are just, you know, people in circumstances all over the map. Even within those groups, our financial circumstances are going to be wildly different. There are umbrella realities though that all of us are under no matter who we are what stage of life or what stage of uh, financial wellness we're in if you adhere to certain philosophies of truth and wisdom and principles basically i think you can exist outside of tragedy in, in certain situations let's say we're experiencing an economic recession in america that can be hard for a lot of people, but if you're properly prepared, it really won't influence you at all. It, it, what, what is a tragedy to some people becomes a minor inconvenience to others. I was smacked in the face with a pandemic basically at the start of my adulthood, right as the college era was ending for me. What I saw was a whole bunch of people's lives being ch changed pretty dramatically due to a really unfortunate situation, a, a pandemic, a tragedy to many. But if you were well positioned in life, the pandemic and the reaction to the pandemic wouldn't have really affected you super dramatically. You know, if you know someone who died, that's really unfortunate, but we're all here to die anyway. You know, we all have an expiration date. So I don't get super caught up in how people die because it, it's, a, it's a guaranteed outcome no matter what. But 50, 60 years from now, if I'm still here to tell the story to the next generations, it's gonna be kind of bizarre how I tell the story because the textbooks are gonna describe this kind of crazy time where uh, there was a pandemic and everybody had to wear masks and you couldn't do a lot of stuff if you weren't vaccinated and all this and all that and all this and all that. And my reality is, man, if, if you hadn't told me that there was a pandemic, I wouldn't have even known it. I wouldn't have known it. And I got COVID. I got it myself. It sucked. It sucked for like two weeks. It was, it made me really tired. Um, it was hard to get over. I didn't go see a doctor. I just dealt with it, but I didn't let life stop. I got married right in the middle of the pandemic. You don't see us wearing masks. You see some of the people uh, that were invited to my wedding uh, wearing masks, but you know, you don't see, you don't see uh, me wearing masks. You don't see Allison wearing a mask at our wedding. That was in June of 2020. You know, s sane people still lived regular lives during that incredibly uh, crazy time of what some people would describe as tragedy. And that's true with economic things too. I'd, I'd better head inside to pick up this Chipotle. You know, in economic times that are difficult, if you're prepared, they're actually Actually, if you really think about it, they're really good opportunities. If you've got capital ready that you can put into the market when it's cheaper, you know, having this economic cycle every couple years where it is 
good and then bad and good and bad uh, creates a very good opportunity for people that are prepared. It's not that this current recession hasn't affected me. My stock portfolio is down 25 grand in the last two years. That's roughly, I don't know, half of what we put in there. We put, we put in about 60 grand. So nearly half of what we put in, we're currently down. But I'm not worried about it. During this economic recession, I've not missed a single bill payment of anything. Allison and I still have fun with our money. We we do fun dates. We uh, travel a little bit here and there. We splurge every once in a while for her birthday. We just bought her a uh, new iPad since she's starting a, a new teaching job next year. We wanted her to uh, have that brand new tool for her to be uh, ready for these new students. With the stylus for it and with the protection plan we bought for it and with the uh, case that we bought for it, um, all in where it's like 980 bucks or more, I think, basically a thousand dollars. I'll be completely honest with you, like we didn't even sweat that decision. Now we can't do that every day. We do that rarely, but we just live by these principles that are going to make it so that first of all, we're in a good position. And second of all, we don't have desires or ambitions that would lead to us finding ourselves in a stressful financial situation again. The Bible isn't just stories of creation and stories of Jesus going and doing miracles. There's a lot of just straight up wisdom, straight up advice in the Bible from our creator on how to live here on earth. These are truths that are verifiable whether you believe in God or not. It's just straight up reality. And there's financial wisdom described in the Bible. Nothing crazy. Other people would just describe it, some of these things as common sense. But it is biblical wisdom. There's a reason that uh, these things are true. The Bible talks about the value of hard work how we're really we're meant to have jobs or at least some sort of role maybe maybe you're not a person who has a paying position but you have some sort of responsibility some sort of role in society that uh, provides value that's by design then there's wisdoms about what we should do with the value we're creating the bible speaks highly of the man who looks ahead and has the foresight to save and be prepared for a rainy day. The Bible talks about how borrowers are slave to the lender. Modern translation, don't drive yourself into debt. Credit cards, car payments, unnecessary. If you avoid those type of things with your everyday decisions, even when life is good, when, when things are prosperous, when things are so good that you can temporarily afford to make a wrong decision, it's when the recession comes that you weren't responsible for, where the decisions that you were responsible for then come back to bite you. So if you're a gig worker right now, I would say keep your head down, keep working hard. The money's not gone away. I'm making $1,000 this week. It's gonna be my first uh, four digit week of the year so far, but just because I wanted to, I just declared, okay, this is gonna be the week that I go and do it for the first time. My previous high for the year is $938 in the seven day span, Sunday through Saturday. I'm gonna make $1,000 this week, relatively easy, without pushing myself very hard. That's just delivering food and taking care of some dogs. Easy stuff, we're talking about easy stuff. If you apply yourself, the money's out there. And there's also wisdom, my friends, in getting married. The Bible talks about that, and that makes, that makes your finances a lot easier too if you're working as a team. So now you, you add up my wife's income and my ability to generate a thousand dollars of a week on command if I want to. You shouldn't have any financial problems uh, with that ability. Pulling up to my first delivery. Actually, as I think about what I've just said, gig workers might be in a better position than anybody else because the income isn't fixed. If you really are having a problem with your finances, go out here and grind. And I mean grind, grind. I'm talking 
Bud Soda, Uber Lyft Phoenix type of grind. My record in a week is 102 hours worked. I did that on the channel uh, back in the beginning of this channel's history. You can find my 100 hour week. Did 102 hours. I ended up somewhere a little bit north of $1,800 earned that week. There's a lot of people in jobs right now limited to 40 hours. Literally, if they wanted to work more, they wouldn't be allowed to. And that's ridiculous. And not that those people couldn't also go pick up some side hustles and, and DoorDash on the side as well. So I guess everybody, nobody's l truly limited. But gig workers, let's, let's have the mentality that we're best positioned because uh, we can do that immediately. We can pop up a 100 hour week right now if we want to. Everything else is gonna play itself out. Everything that's bigger than just one person, things that we can't help on an, on an immediate basis, you just gotta have the patience. And again, that's, that's a biblical practice. That's a biblical perspective of exercising patience. And the $25,000 that I'm down in my Robin Hood, I'm not actually down that money. I really believe that because I'll just wait long enough for it to return. I guarantee you I'll make that money back. I absolutely guarantee you there's no 20 year period in the history of the United States that you will find that money in the market did not increase in value. So the game isn't about can you outsmart the market? Can you time the market? It's not, no. The game is if the market struggles for the last two years as it has, can you wait at a maximum 18 more? I'm 25 years old. I can answer that question with yes. So it doesn't bother me. The money that I've got set aside in there, I don't need it. I don't need it because I can continue to produce money to, to cover my bills. I don't have to touch that money for 18 more years if I don't want to. I just finished up delivery of the stack and now I've got this pickup 750 two miles, uh, same delivery location for each of these orders. It's the same customer, so this should not be a bad order to take. That's gonna do it for Welty every seventh. Let me know in the comments if you guys have an idea for a future topic. I will get to it. And we can get more specific than we just got. I feel like I had to give a broad answer to the very broad question. Uh, feel free to hit me with something more pointed and we can really dig deep on something. I appreciate each and every one of you who consistently listen to the end on these videos. I will see you next time on Welty.